the first thing I will say straight away, vocal communication, uh, not verbal, but vocal, you know, uh, moaning, uh, noise, sounds is a complete write-off. It is not information you can come from typically, only if you actually know your partner well, yeah, so it takes, you know, a fair bit of knowledge of your partner. Otherwise, you can't rely on the vocal signs, on the woman making noise, or a man as well. It's the same, really. A lot of people are shy about it, which means they will not make a noise when they are actually feeling good. So when you don't hear any vocals, it doesn't tell you that what you're doing is not good. Secondly, when people do make a noise, there's quite a high probability of them faking. Particularly women will fake it, you know, they will act, they will perform, like in porn. It's like a self-confidence issue, they're hiding their real self, you know, it's very uh, widespread these days. But also there's like an idea of, you know, kind of fake it until you make it. Uh, when people might try to consciously make noise in sex to create more sensation, to create more feelings. So they're not feeling something uh, because, uh, they're not making noise because they're feeling something. They are um, uh, making noise to feel something. They're not feeling it yet. You're not doing it for them yet. And there are even practices that are taught by sex coaches uh, that sound, you know, activates you more, activates your sexual energy. So people can uh, do it in sex sometimes consciously as kind of a way to create more feeling in sex rather than as a form of feedback. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not feedback or it is exaggerated. It's not as much as they're actually feeling, yeah? Third, expecting your partner to communicate vocally puts a lot of pressure on them. It means they have to do the work to be constantly feeding back to you vocally what they're feeling. Now, if they want to make noise, if they like it because it makes them feel better in sex, you know, by all means. But if they have to make noise to keep communicating to you that you are doing well, this changes it for them. And likewise, they can't relax, they can't enjoy sex because they're too conscious that, you know, if they're not making noise at any particular time, you kind of get used to it yeah but you as the person who is kind of doing it for them you get used to them making noise and they are aware that if they stop making noise then you are going to uh, worry what's, what's what's happened so they're kind of trapped to have to keep making noise till the end of sex right fourth reason you know a, a person would authentically make noise in sex only above a certain threshold of intensity or feeling of sensation and i'm teaching you the whole progression how to build it up from softer to more and more intense and more powerful yeah because that is the best way that the sexual energy will work so there will be phases where the feeling is not intense yet but it is really nice. It is really satisfying. Uh, it feels amazing to your partner. There are lots of places like this in sex, and I really encourage people to explore them. And then you do something intense as well. You know, that's the best combination. Now, in those phases, if somebody is making noise, they are basically faking because it's not intense enough to make noise, even though it's really wonderful. Uh, so it's a bit like, you know, would you make noise if you went to a comedy show or to a sports game, of course you would. Would you be constantly shouting and screaming if you were uh, on a beach having an amazing time with a cocktail in your hand, you know? So if they're not screaming, it doesn't mean they're not having a good time. So for all these reasons, you know, vocal communication without words is uh, just not reliable. The chances of somebody making noise when they don't actually mean it because they fake it or because they kind of like trying to hype themselves up, the chances of somebody uh, not making noise when uh, they're feeling good because they are shy or because they're just in a really nice place without you know massive intensity like even if it is unreliable only 30 or 40 percent of the time uh, that means you can't rely on it a hundred percent of the time really yeah so as a form of communication it's a total write-off unless you really know the person and you really know what the sounds mean but in that case i would really encourage you to let them be free to make noise only because they want to, because they enjoy making noise in sex. And don't ever make them feel that it is important for you to hear the noise, to uh, reaffirm that what you're doing is good, because soon enough that will trap them in having to do this all the time for you. So which non-verbal signs are more reliable for you to read in your partner to see how you're doing? So the only two non-verbal signs that uh, are reliable enough for you to use as information are breathing and movement. Uh, what you are listening for typically is not some kind of a X level of breathing uh, where she's enjoying herself. You know, that kind of thing doesn't exist, obviously. But you're looking for...